There's so many vendors that are complimentary. And at the end of the day, it's for the partners to choose. Grow my business, reduce risk, and gain efficiencies. Good afternoon, MSP channel. My name is Cameron Goldman, Senior Director of Vendor Strategic Initiatives, and welcome to Technically Unraveled. we got a doozy of a show for you today. We're going to be joined by Ryan Wall from Valamail. We're going to discuss some major changes from Gmail and Yahoo Mail. As always, be sure to like, share, subscribe. But before we get into the show, we've got a hell of a video for you from the PAX 8 Studios team. We are here for the sales kickoff in Americas. Just bringing everyone in together, building on energy, building out the plan, the strategy for the year. Just talking about what we've done in the prior year and what we're gonna be planning for in the future. So it's just a really awesome planning session and just an opportunity to meet other people that you don't see every day. I think it's just amazing that we are able to bring people together and, and meet in person and bringing people here, having an amazing venue, getting the year started off like this, it will kind of help escalate to us to where we're trying to achieve our, our business objectives. I think I received probably 50 hugs yesterday. It's been wonderful to see everybody, vendors, my peers, and really just all in the same building. Yeah, really having these kind of key vendors here in, in person, giving some of these speeches and vendor presentations to the, the wide sales audience, um, and also other members from the organization. It gives them a chance to really connect about really what's driving them, their technology, and their plan for the year. When the opportunity showed up to sponsor the event, to really get, a, get our message out, we jumped at it. And uh, we're really excited. We're really excited to work with PAX 8 because it's so different than the other channel partners we work with. It's been invaluable to be able to have all of the PAX 8 sellers under one roof, to be able to have these meetings and discussions, and just to have that level of intimacy with the teams that we're working with and that we're gonna depend on you know, in 2024 and beyond to really grow together. Can't underestimate how valuable this time has been for our company, and I would imagine any other vendor that's considering it would see just as much value uh, from attending. Man, awesome video from our studios team. But with that, I want to bring on your host, Kristen Fahrenbach. Kristen, what's up? How are you? Hey, hey, good to see you, Cam. Thanks for starting us off today. Very, very cool. Good to see everybody. I'm Kristen Fahrenbach, the Senior Director of Microsoft Go to Market here at Pax 8. Love it. Thanks for, uh, thanks for you know, letting me kind of do that opening a little bit there. Uh, but before we get into it, we've got Ryan Wall, as I mentioned. He's going to be joining us from Valamail. A uh, couple opening notes, though. Kristen, some really, really impactful stuff happening in the news. Uh, have you seen this article, Deep Fake Cost an Organization $25 million? Oof, I've not seen this one in particular, but I know there's a lot of buzz going around right now. Yeah, so what happened was... Uh, this employee, he ends up on a, a bridge. He's there met with a, a couple of his coworkers, one of them being the CFO, uh, and it was all deep fake. It was all, you know, they, they uh, made up the faces, they made up the voices, Stop the it. whole thing. They asked him to wire $25 million to an account, and sure enough, he did it. $25 million. $25 Gone. Million. Gone. And the reason I bring this up, the reason I think that this is so timely and so important is that it started with a phishing email and phishing, spam, all this stuff. It really kind of gets, you know, lumped into the same conversation. And, and MSPs have a huge opportunity here to really drive a lot of education back into their customer bases, really start to reduce the amount of spam that's in those customer inboxes, drive that productivity up uh, and make sure that customers are working on the things that are really relevant to them, right? 100%. So I bring that up because there's another one that you might not have seen, and this really leads us well uh, over to Valamail. But just this past F1 season, Andretti Racing missed a critical email, and it's because it ended up in their spam folder. It could have cost them a spot on the track. We still don't even know how that's going to play out. And our MSP's customers are in the same position. 
if their customers are prospecting for customers, then they're training them to be on the look and, and watch out for the same malicious things that our MSPs are training their customers to do. So if you want to make sure that your customers' customers view your customer as a high-quality organization worthy of doing business with, it's time to implement DMARC. And here to explain what Kristen and, and I uh, you know, don't know about DMARC, we got Ryan Wall. Ryan, thanks for joining us. Thanks. How are you doing today? Doing good. Good to see you. Good. Nice seeing you guys. Uh, Ryan, I got to ask, have you seen some of this stuff? Did you see uh, the Andretti F1? Did you see the uh, the deep fake? I hadn't seen the deep fake uh, 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 article or um, the Andretti stuff, but it's it's not surprising because we hear that from our customers all the time. And that's usually the reason they come to Bell Mail. That's right. Ryan, uh, so tell us a little bit about yourself and please help sure. help us understand what is DMARC because... Honestly, that stuff gets over my head really fast. Sure. First of all, my name is Ryan Wall. Uh, I'm a product, uh, I'm a manager here at the product support division. So I'm not in the sales team. I'm actually working with customers on a daily basis to, to help implement DMARC uh, for their, for uh, their organizations um, to give you a little, um, and before uh, I was at Valamail, I actually was uh, a customer of Valamail and that's how I became familiar with them. Uh, my manager walked in my door one day and said, hey, I need you to implement DMARC. And then I had to start scratching my head and figuring out what DMARC was before I even got on the phone with them. Um, and, and thankfully, as it was going on, it, it, it had played with some of the stuff that I had already been playing around with. But this just, uh, Valamail helped me implement it even better and get uh, my school corporation uh, to DMARC enforcement. And what is DMARC? Like, um, help, help demystify yeah. it for us. Because I, I really, sure. you know, anytime you start talking about DMARC, certifications, SSL, like, I'm lost. There's all these yeah, acronyms so it's that a perfect just kind of get lumped in. Yeah, and, and, and I am so used to the acronym, uh, the, the uh, DMARC phrase. I have to think about what it is because I use the acronym so much. So DMARC, SPF, DCAM, I use them all the time. So I actually, so to start off, uh, DMARC stands, it's, it's a long thing. It's domain based message authentication, reporting and compliance. That's a lot of phrases all shoved into a very small, uh, small acronym. Uh, but the grand scheme of things, uh, DMARC, uh, let, let's kind of break that down, for example. So obviously it's domain based. So it, this is all done on each individual domain that you work on. So it's not like something that you can put out there and it's going to cover all your domains. Each domain is, uh, taken uh, separately. So you, you do this process uh, on every domain that you work on. Uh, message authentication, that's the key point of DMARC as well. It takes two uh, older specifications, SPF and DCAM, and it, it leverages them um, actually and improves them just a little bit as part of the DMARC standard to help you authenticate the email that's coming to you. And then the, uh, the other portions of it that are important, uh, reporting, which is a very key piece to the DMARC uh, journey, and conformance, which is the policy piece that says, all right, if I don't pass authentication, that message authentication piece, what am I supposed to do with that email? And then there's even some mild flavors in between there. But getting back to that authentication piece, uh, and I said it leverages SPF and DCAM, those standards have been around for a long time, especially SPF. Um, I always talk about when I'm talking to customers that have no um, idea what DMARC was, we start talking about SPF and I say SPF was brought out a long time ago when you know you could go reach and touch every box or every machine that was sending email on your your company's behalf and it's it, it's it's kind of evolved especially with cloud computing uh, nowadays um and then uh, as uh uh third-party senders started sending email they, they ran into some limitations so then uh, uh dcam came out which is domain key identified in email or the main <laughs> domain key identified mail and what that is, is basically uh, uh, public and private key encryption to sign a message to get around some of the other limitations of SPF. And so what DMARC does is bring those two together, add an additional piece to both SPF and DCAM, which is called alignment, which uh, was part of the SPF, but never really enforced. And by using uh, that, you can basically say, you can authenticate all of the email that is should be being sent by you and allows you to say, all right, this email, this email, this email, this email is all being sent by me. Anything that doesn't pass that, all of this, and that's the conformance piece. And there are th uh, three levels of the conformance. Uh, P equals none, which is basically what we always consider a monitoring mode, where it basically gives you the visibility with a, a nice a nice visibility into seeing what is being sent on your behalf. 
And then once you get, you get that visibility and can start uh, authenticating all the emails that are part of that you want to have sent, then you can put um, the enforcement piece inside, which is quarantine, which on the grand scheme of things, it says, if it doesn't pass authentication, send it to the user's junk folder, which is great, but we also know how the users are sometimes and they dig into the junk folder sometimes, even when we tell them not to, they do that. So then the, the gold standard for the gold standard for DMARC is reject, which basically says, um, email, uh, email receiver, receiver, if you get this email and it doesn't pass authentication, don't even process it, just drop the connection right away. Oh, wow. And that's a very long so, explanation of no, DMARC. no. I think this is great. Helpful. And there's a lot of different acronyms that we use, you know, at Paxade, at Microsoft, and all these other vendors, right? So, SPF to me, before, you know, we met and we were chatting through this, meant something different in a different world. So, when you're saying SPF, it's sending policy framework, but mm -hmm. DMARC has evolved from that basic framework. So, is it just like layered on top of that, or how did it evolve from that base? Yeah, so in, in the third party email ecosystem and even in your own ecosystem, there's several different ways to authenticate. And I know we're going to get into this, but um, IPs are a great way to authenticate, but really D DKIM is the new, um, I, I wouldn't call it a gold standard, but the new way of making sure everything is getting sent. Because once you start bringing in email forwarders, some secure email gateways, that's going to break SPF. Um, and then, so DKIM allows you to get around that and, and, and takes care of that process. Um, but again, they work in harmony. Uh, uh, so one, the part that I didn't really mention um, for DMARC is the DMARC standard says you have to pass aligned authentication with either SPF or DKIM uh, or DKIM. So you can, you can pass it with either one. So that's the nice thing about D, the DMARC standard and allowing you to get your email authenticated. Excellent. All right. So you demystified it for us, but now we got to know what are these new rules from Gmail, Yahoo Mail? Like, can you run this uh, this through for me a little bit? Yeah. So this is uh, an interesting journey in mine. So I actually remember back in the day when uh, I had to first figure out SPF a long time ago, and this is uh, so this is just a continuing journey of both Google and Yahoo to start. Uh, cleaning up the email infrastructure. So if you look at the email structure a long time ago, they were, the idea of authentication was never there. So what Google and Yahoo have done over the years is say, hey, we need to start cleaning up the email ecosystem. So what they have done is basically say, there are several different rules, but the, at a high level, that they want everybody to ha at least have a DMARC record of people's none, which is that monitoring mode. So you can start getting some visibility in there. And then on top of that, they're saying you must, uh, authenticate your email. So basically they're starting you down that path of DMARC. Um, they're not making it completely uh, do DMARC, so they're not making you put an enforcement policy yet. So because of the people's none, but they're starting down that path. They've also had some other additional rules in there saying, if you're sending an email from uh, an IP address or you have a server out there, it must have a reverse DNS lookup. If you're sending bulk email, it has to have uh, um, a one click unsubscribe for your bulk email. Um, and, and, and there's also, some, you also have to maintain a lowest family. And, and the way um, I've heard Google and Yahoo talk about that is, is basically you have to send email to people that want email. I'm trying to think, yeah, that's everything. Yeah, but, you know. But there is no, one. Go ahead. There, there's been a lot oh, yeah. uh, from Gmail and, and it's not just around the enforcement too, right? Like I got an email that some of my older email, you know, and, and space is kind of getting, uh, you know, older things are getting deleted or older email accounts are getting deleted. So you can see that that kind of the strategy here is is they're probably paying for a lot of storage space and, and they're trying to reduce that a little bit. True. So, and, and one of the, go ahead. No, no, go ahead, Ryan. I, I was just going to say, so one of the things, uh, I know you guys deal with a lot of Microsoft shops and a, a lot of my customers recently who have started to hear about that. So there's been a big article in Forbes, and I think there was one in Wall Street Journal starting to talk about the Google and the Yahoo announcements and stuff that's coming up. And, and before I forget to say that, this all was going to start in February 1st. So we're actually already starting that, and we've already started seeing some um, some messages back from Google, at least, saying, hey, you're not following the rules, so we're going to slowly delay that. So that I should have mentioned that timeline. So Google and Yahoo have announced this back in October, and they said they were going to start this in on... February of, of this year. Since then, uh, a lot 
pushback from people because I don't think everybody really paid attention to it until about January. And then they realized they only had about a, a, a month to get ready. So Google has slightly modified their rules. They said they're going to expand that timeline to, to full enforcement. Yahoo really hasn't said anything about that. But basically, uh, Google has said they're going to push that out to June and slowly start slowly a small percentage of the email are going to start getting these what they're called temp errors which are basically like bounce back messages and they're going to tell you what's going on with that so at least you'll start seeing some of that but the idea behind this is to start getting these uh, rules in place and start doing that and so when you say gmail and yahoo right that, that's not like the actual companies that are sending them from gmail and yahoo right like where is that getting blocked yeah. it's at like the end user yeah, so that's a, that's a great question because I, I, that's what I was going to talk about earlier is if, if you're a Microsoft Office 365 shop, some of our customers have started saying, well, why does this affect me? It's who you're sending email to. So if you're a B2C customer, a B2C business, this is very important. Um, the reason Google and Yahoo have the, the ability to do this and, and do this is because they are hosting a majority of the email boxes on the, the internet. These are the people. So when you send an email to your customer, more than likely, it's going to be a Google box or a, a Yahoo box. So they're, they're starting to do that. Google has a large user base of mailboxes that they are helping protect. And uh, uh, one stat I heard a long time ago from Google is that 80% of the email they receive is junk. So they're trying to, to stem that tide 80%? and just get the good email. Yeah. And that's that's been a while since I've heard that. I'm, I, I haven't heard anything new. But you know, a majority of the email that they get is just junk that just they filter out to begin with. You know, and I mean, I know I go through mine. Look, I've got a personal in Gmail. I even had a Yahoo back in the day, right? But I go through there pretty periodically and I'm like, unsubscribe, unsubscribe. Because there's just so much that even comes through that's not blocked, right? So, mm -hmm. I mean, you're from Valamail. And can you just kind of explain how does your company work well with some of these Microsoft products that a lot of these MSPs are already using? Sure. So first of all, if you ever started, have tried to go down the, what we call DIY route of DMARC, you'll realize that those DMARC reports that I was talking about from the reporting po uh, portion of DMARC spectrum, you basically put an email address in there and you, and you get a bunch of XML files sent to this email box and you're like, holy cow, what am I going to do with those? So you open them up and you open them up in Microsoft Excel, you look at them and say, well, what is this IP? So what Valamel has done is we have basically taken those XML files. We receive them on your behalf and on a domain, a domain by domain basis, we basically interpret those and run them through a classification engine that says, all right, this particular IP is MailChimp. This particular IP is Office 365. This particular IP is maybe Google. We give you a graphical user interface to all of those DMARC reports. So it makes it really easy and user friendly for you. So you don't have to have multiple tabs because you're not just going to get one email uh, XML file for all of the email you sent a particular day or may have been sent by you, you're going to get emails from every single receiver that's out there that has received email. So you may have two or two, three, four, five emails for one particular day. And if you're sending a huge volume, you may have two or three emails from Google in one day because of the volume that you're sending. So what we've done is we do that. You bring it into our, our application. We'll give you a nice graphical user, user interface to see all that information and see who's sending you. So prime example, and the reason I kind of fell in love with Valamail back in the day was when I was working at this K-12 school corporation. Um, we, we implemented, we started seeing this. We had a learning management system back in the day that we had implemented and all our teachers were supposed to be using it. Unbeknownst to us, until we got into the Valamail thing, we had some shadow IT going on. We had some teachers that had didn't like our learning management system, so they went out and set up their own. Well, that was great. We didn't know about it until we got into DMARC. So again, that gave us that reporting piece. So we were able to see that. And then we went to the conformance piece. So we didn't authorize them. So when we turned on DMARC enforcement, their stuff just stopped. So it's bringing control to your email environment at a way that you never had. So that's the real the reason I like DMARC is because it gives you the ability to have visibility in the stuff that you, you, you never really knew because you're not going to know if some server in China is sending email on your behalf to people somewhere else. It brings you that. It helps protect your brand. It does. It helps protect your brand. Or if you're an MSP, it helps protect the brand of your customers. It really does help give that. And it gives you that visibility. 
It's so true. And and you got to, you know, protect that brand if you want to be viewed as, you know, a high quality organization. And, and it's the MSP's responsibility to kind of bring that education to the customer and say, hey, you know, this is something we have to do. And this this is your brand that's on the line for it. Ryan, you 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 hit on some of the volume uh, notes there about how oh, yeah. many emails we're talking about here. But uh, can you can you quantify it for us? Has has yeah? Or, so uh, yeah. that that's a good question because uh, Google and Yahoo um, basically just said that all right, they've got two sets of rules right now. Um, if you send less than five thousand emails a day to Google. You follow one set of rules, which is basic, basically the same DMARC um, standards. But the problem is, is if you send over 5,000 emails a day, and, and when I say that, you only have to send over 5,000 emails to a Google Google mailboxes once in the lifetime. And they really didn't even say when they were going to start that clarification. Really isn't so that you had one. Day. You're right. And it's not because, especially if you're a, a good small to mid sized uh, business that has a, a, a customer list that's of even even a relatively small size, you're probably going to hit that. Um, you then have to start following the rules. So what we've been telling all our customers, just follow the, the high tier rules. And so what they've done is they they basically said, you basically have to follow DMARC's uh, authentication standards. So you're going to start down that DMARC path anyway. But they've added a little wrinkle into that where, remember how I said DMARC was an, an OR, so you had to pass with aligned SPF or aligned DCAM? They're basically now saying, but you still have to have a DCAM or an SPF signature in as well. So it's it's a little bit of complicated. Uh, our, I know our product is starting to help figure that out, but that's the reason they've kind of also pushed back some of those rules uh, because everyone was used to going down the DMARC path and now that they're adding that SPF in too. But most of our major uh, third-party providers like MailChimp um, are, are making those, so they're doing that. So the nice thing is that the big companies are take, taking care of that. The problem is, your local email servers and things like that that may not. So like Exchange natively, uh, if you have an on, uh, on-prem Exchange server, it doesn't support DKIM out there. I know there's some third-party plugins, but if you're not aware of these rules, you don't know that you need to start looking at it. So this is a great educational time for everyone to get to know that and start figuring those out. Be on the lookout for those, those bounce back messages to help, but also get that reporting in place. So when, DMAR, uh, when Google and Yahoo said at least have that P equals none, they didn't say you had to actually have an email address for that reporting. Our stake is, is if you don't have that, it's really not doing anything. And my, my guess is, too, if you look at the tea leaves, as you look at how Google and Yahoo have tried to uh, increase security of email and stuff like that, they're going to require DMARC at some point. So why not just go ahead and bite that, uh, bite, take the bite of that apple out and get it taken care of? We're having yeah, customers. Yeah, it's already best uh, yeah. So get it there. And, and really what they're doing is they're just implementing and enforcing best practices in email that have been out there for a really long time. Gosh, there's, there's a lot. And I mean, I think like you're really making sense why we would want to go down this path. Right. But there's gotta be a catch, right? Like what are some of the problems with maybe starting this? Is it all just peachy or are there some pitfalls that we need no. to watch out for? No, and that's a that's a great question. And so at Biomail, we always uh, talk about the, it's a it's a three phase journey. You're going to implement the automation that Valmail brings to to bear for the for that. But then the the second part of that is authenticating all those uh, email senders, and that depending on how large of an infrastructure you are, how big of an environment, and, and who is the admin of all those services. So if you're a small mom and pop shop, that's probably going to be pretty easy. But, you know, you start getting up there to a mid-sized company, you may have 10 or 12 services and a couple of marketing systems that may have been put together by the marketing guy with his credit card when he was here. And he may still be here. He may not be. Uh, but, you know, people use it. So it's identifying the admins of those. But the nice thing is, is once you get them identified and get everything going, you're, you can control it from then on. So I always say it's DMARC is really easy if you're setting up a brand new business because you're going to start a DMARC enforcement and go from there. It's a little bit harder for the older companies, but it, there is a process and, and Valimail and, uh, you know, is here to help you do that um, with everything. So. so most of our partners today, they're, they're running the uh, exchange online by way of, you know, any number of these uh, Microsoft packages, M365 Business Premium, E3s, E5s. Thanks for the thumbs up there, Kristen. Uh, what what are some of the implementation steps? You know, when when you are running it uh, through Exchange Online. 
Yeah. So the biggest thing is, is DKIM is not turned on by default in your, uh, in your environment. You got to turn that on. Um, and that's, it's, it's simple, but it's not something that you think of. Uh, but then, you know, the nice thing is O365 out of the box, other than the DKIM is ready to go because they already force you to have that SPF record and things like that. The other thing is then just getting the third party services and then getting a handle on those third party services. Uh, and with a tool like uh, Valamail, uh, which we actually have a Valamail core that is a part of PAX 8 that we help you do that, uh, we can help you get going and, and get that identified and go from there. Awesome. Excellent. So, I mean, I feel like, Cam, you, you, you baited me here, so now we're going to go for it. Now, if a lot of the partners, the base SKU that they're working off of is some sort of Microsoft product, right? And if there's maybe a certain SKU or something that should like send a flag up to the partner, like, hey, maybe I should think of Valamail, right? Like, is there anything in particular that, if, whether it be business premium, is there something where like a little red flag should yeah. go off? Yeah, so I'm not available. I don't know all of the SKUs, but the, the SKU that I have always associated with security is that E5 license. So if you're going down that got E5 license and you want to, yeah, it's got it all, but you also, usually you go there because of the security functionality. As soon as you hit that, you want DMARC as well, because that's, you know, Microsoft doesn't have a DMARC uh, process in place, but we're, Valamail is Microsoft's preferred DMARC vendor. So we're here to help you. So when you start down that E5 process, I, I automatically say, and, and our sales folks, I hear them all the time, if you're doing E5, loop file mail into that process because you obviously care about security and you want to get that done. Good stuff. Yeah, I got to think, Kristen, you, you kind of set yourself up for, for that and, and you probably have better handle on some of those SKUs, you know, uh, but definitely some of the, the Defender 4 Exchange. Defender, is that right? Or we're just calling them Defender plans. Um, we got so many the... Defenders. What do you want to defend? We could defend it all. We want to defend the inbox today. That's for sure. <laughs> yeah. Ryan, uh, you know, uh, bring us home here. If we had to give our partners a, a call to action, what uh, what would it be for uh, for learning more about Valamail and, and how they can leverage that through Pax8? Yeah, so the call to action to me is always start the, down the DMARC journey. It is a journey. Uh, you're gonna, it, it's long, it's, it's a never ending journey, but start down that journey. Definitely get a, a, a reporting address in your DMARC record. I know P equals none is, is what everyone's requiring, but start down that journey get ahead of the curve on that if you don't use value at least use some sort of tool because i don't I, I don't want anybody to sit there and start going through xml files use something out there uh, valamail has a free product we also have valamail core through pax8 um, there's a lot of stuff out there i'm not saying use us i would prefer to use us because i think we have the best product out there but you use uh use something to get down this journey it's a good thing it's good for your email um google and yahoo's heart is in the right place to get you know get this going they want to clean up email and it's all good be a good email citizen and start down this journey yeah msps awesome. don't let your customers emails end up in the spam folder i think that's a simple way to put it ryan thank you so much for your time today i know that i learned a lot through this session cam good to see you as always and ryan we hope always. to see you back here soon I look forward to it. All righty. Well, thank you everybody for joining Technically Unraveled today. Hope we demystified another topic for you. Next week, we look forward to bringing on Andy Porter. He's going to talk about Azure and security co-pilots. You don't want to miss it. We'll see you there.